Hello. Well, I suppose we all know that the government is trying to push us in a certain direction using a lot of loaded language. And uh, this is a magazine called The Daily Skeptic, which was started by Toby Young, who is also the one of the founders of an organisation called the Free Speech Union. And in it, he talks about a partially government-owned company called Behavioural Insights Team. Uh, you think about the words on that and you'll see how creepy that is. And Sky to make uh, change people's minds about government policies. In this case, the net zero agenda. But I am, uh, I'll get back to that a bit later on. First, I'm going to talk about another bit of loaded language. Uh, two videos ago, uh, I did an analysis of the Shropshire by-election. And when I uploaded the video, uh, you will find it on the internet, but you will see that it's not monetized. That's because it was put into video purgatory by YouTube. Now, it was an, an analysis of a, the results of a by-election. But I did mention the word trance in there. Trance, you know, as in transgender. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, there goes this one as well. Anyway, I mentioned the word trance, and that must have triggered something in the YT algorithm because it got kicked into the rough, hit into the rough. Well, you know what I mean. Uh, and when I asked, well, uh, so they said they were going to have a human to evaluate it. And that was days and days ago, and it still hasn't been evaluated. So I went to YouTube support. Ha, that's a joke. And and they said, well, there's nothing we can do. It's just got to be evaluated. Now, the only possible reason for such foot dragging has to be punishment, obviously. They know that most people who follow a certain channel and a topical news commentary a channel like mine, uh, most of uh, my uh, subscribers will have seen the video within the first couple of days let alone seven. So even if they release it into the impeccably moral world of advertising, the revenue from it will be, you know, fractions of pennies from occasional visitors who just happen to wander in a few months ahead. Now, sometimes, as my regulars must have noticed by now, when I deal with even slightly controversial subjects, I don't even bother monetizing. But on this occasion, I decided to contest their assessment because what's happening is that YouTube is sort of going into a tunnel, isn't it? Like a fly into a pitcher plant. It starts off wide enough and then it gets narrower and narrower until there isn't even room to turn round anymore. I hope, by the way, you all noticed that I got round the YT restrictions in my last video by making an Orwellian reference in the title, which uh, to a computer would appear to suggest one course of action, while uh, you humans would have understood something else altogether. However, this made me think about Orwellian language and whether organisations like YouTube or even the government with this neuro-linguistic programming they're trying, uh, whether they could actually win. Because Orwell's idea was that the party, uh, if you've read 1984, I mean, a lot of people have seen films of it, but in the book itself, there is a discussion about language. And the idea is that the party would actually stop people thinking the wrong things by changing the language so that they don't have the words to formulate anything other than what the uh, the government had told them to think. 
So, uh, for instance, in that video, I used the expression don't be double plus bad which wasn't strictly how it should have gone in 1984. It should have been, don't be double plus non-party. Because in 1984, the language was being changed to embed the idea that anything that was desirable, good and decent uh, should be in the word party. So anything that's party is good and anything that's non-party is evil. I use the word bad because it just made it more comprehensible when you're scanning through a lot of videos to see. Whatever. I have come to the conclusion though that Orwell was wrong. But for sure there are people taken in by that sort of linguistic programming but in general the human mind is endlessly inventive with language. And it's been noted that, for instance, sign language, you know, the various languages, there's an American one, there's a British one, despite its artificiality and uh, despite the fact that when kids learn sign language, they're learning it in a less intuitive way because they have to go to a teacher and it's, um, it's more an academic exercise than just natural osmosis. But even so, it's in, in every case, sign language has always developed its own informal phraseology and slang. And uh, the slang is in itself a good example of how language subverts the rules, even when those rules are strictly enforced. The Académie Française, which is a committee instituted specifically to make up French words to substitute for English, uh, that's been trying for years to get rid of uh, words like fashionista and le weekend uh, without much notable success. And another really striking example of how language can't be confined by our great leaders is, of course, um, let's go, which got round the rules of bad language and uh, those of criticism of a certain person, which are rigidly enforced by the mainstream media, and it took it completely out of their control. The Romanians got rid of their dictator, Nicolae Ceausescu, simply by chanting the word Timișoara, which is the name of a town where a massacre had been perpetrated at Ceausescu's behest in 1989. Now, Orwell was wrong about that. It might work for a while, but language cannot be used to change people's perceptions forever. It seems that holding words in your control is like holding water in your hands. Some of it's bound to escape. In fact, all of it eventually. In that context, therefore, I'm drawing your attention to a letter by Toby Young and Laura Dodsworth of the Free Speech Union, which was sent to Melanie Dawes, the chief executive of Ofcom. I'll leave a link in the description so you can read the whole thing if you want. But it discusses a company, as I said, called Behavioural Insights Team, which is a limited company, but was at least for a time partly owned by the government. And that's rather creepy. Apparently Sky TV entered into some sort of a collaboration with uh, BIT, to help the government push into the minds of the public the idea that net zero is both achievable and desirable. This resulted in the publication of The Power of TV, nudging viewers to decarbonize their lifestyles. They're quite open about it. And the launch of Sky's Sky Zero campaign, which recommended that broadcasters make use of behavioural science principles. Okay, so psychologists have uh, spoke, have studied how people react to certain information given in certain ways, and they were using that, or intended to use that, 
to change people's minds. The, the, the creepiest bit is, is coming in the next paragraph. Uh, behavioral science principles, including subliminal messaging. That's really awful. Um, to encourage viewers to endorse and comply with government policy. And that's, that's just shocking. The report recommends broadcasters utilize sophisticated psychological techniques to change the behavior of children. And this is their quote, because of the important influence they have on the attitude and behaviors of their parents. So what it's saying here is children are more valuable. You can make children do what you want them to do more easily. You don't have to employ logical arguments with children you, uh, because children are programmed to follow adults. And then the children will change the minds of their parents. They're getting at children. And that together with the fact that lockdowns are actually damaging children. It's, I'm not, this is not a conspiracy theory. I don't think it's coordinated in that sort of way, although some of you may argue to the contrary. But the end result is that something is having a go at our children. Um, so Orwell was right about that. Uh, do you, I suppose some of you will remember in 1984 the children of one of the characters, Tom Parsons, they report him to the authorities and get him arrested on an obviously false charge. And that very disturbing report about Sky Television reminds me why I'm making these sorts of videos and why even a small channel like mine might be important, as small as it is. It's one of the drops of water leaking out between the fingers of the what's turned out to be a demon child of big government and mainstream media. And uh, well, yeah, that's it. We are the water drops. And so uh, I'm just glad I have the opportunity to do it. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.